<laughs> um, you know, I wore black all four of my years in high school. Our, our colors were black and gold, but our main home uniform was all black. Huh. So I actually like it. I actually like the thought of it. It's uh, something that Coach Meyer mentioned to me when I was getting recruited. He said it's something they were thinking about, but uh, he said they hadn't decided on it yet, but it looks good. What's up, Jerry? <laughs> I'm a bad. Did that uh, have any impact on you recruiting-wise? And hey, the uniforms, or was that just a nice thing that coach said? Uh, no, it was just something cool that he showed me. Uh, other than that, it didn't really matter. <laughs> just how impressionable are recruits to things like that? I mean, uh, Oregon kind of set the trend with the uh, uniform thing. And uh, you see some other teams like Oregon State, uh, even Teams that have a lot of tradition throughout the nation, they try to change the uniforms up to get more recruits. But uh, I think it's a, a college trend that's going on right now, and I think it's I think it's pretty good. Teams are trying to tell you that they're going to play you at running back. Do you buy this then? When someone says, "Hey, we're going to wear black," or do you think that's a farce too? Nah, I just think it's pretty cool that uh, when you come in, they try to impress you any any way possible. So when you brought up the new jerseys, I just knew that he was just trying to impress me. But you got to look at it like that. Was there any jersey you were shown during your recruitment, not necessarily here, but anywhere that you were like, oh man, I don't want to wear that? Uh, I can't really say that. <laughs> I mean, I like I like all the jerseys, but uh, when Clemson wears all purple, no no offense against them or nothing like that. When they were all purple, I wasn't a big fan of it, but I did love Clemson a lot. What's, what's coming here next year? What do you hear the uniform coming next year? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I have no idea, man. <laughs> you know, Coach Mario and, and the guys always got something to do sleeve, so uh, we'll see. You know, if you just said, I came to Ohio State because of the black jerseys, it would make it a lot easier. <laughs> 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 Get it out there. Nah, that, that, I mean, I ain't going to say that. <laughs> Everybody, go ahead, go ahead. Everybody talks about how much they matter to recruits, and then every time we ask a player if it mattered, they say no. So. I mean, because when you're a recruit, all you're thinking about is looking good on the field and, uh, what you're going to wear and uh, how you're going to look on TV. But when you're actually a player at the school, it, it really doesn't matter anymore because you're thinking about what the opposing offense is going to do to you or what the defense is going to do to you. Uh, try not to look bad on the field. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't it eight tackles last week, Raekwon, I think? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. Yep. Yeah. So does, your, does your body feel different after eight tackles versus, you know, 16 tackles or whatever you had? Those, those games when you're making a huge number of tackles. You know, when you, ask, like? when you ask me that about my body, man, I got this terrible turf burn on my knee. Oh, really? Yeah, I think that's the worst one. But <laughs> but other than that, nah, I mean, our strength, st our strength staff does a great job of getting us back right for the next week. I mean, of course, game day, we have our nicks and bruises, but uh, getting ready for the next week, we feel better. Rick, on, do, you, do you guys feel like after the last two weeks, defense has, for one of another word, to get back on track a little bit? I mean, you know, you got gashed a couple times by a couple of running quarterbacks. Hackenberg's not that kind of guy. <laughs> but <clears throat> what, what do y'all need to get straightened out, I guess, before you move on? Uh, get get better every week. You know, uh, every offense is going to try to do something different to us. I think coming in, they had like three quarterbacks that were eligible to start or whatnot, Maryland. So uh, the guy that we were thinking that was going to start and didn't start, and they brought out the running quarterback. And his speed was receiving. I got to tip my hat to him. Uh, we took some angles that he outran. And I just got to give him his props. He did a great job. And where do you think y'all are from a progression standpoint as a defense, so playing well together and stuff? I mean, are people going to look at those couple of runs by Diamant and Hills and maybe get the wrong impression about you guys? Or You know what I mean? Where, where do you think y'all are from the standpoint of improving? I mean, you know, it's only, it was only a challenge, you know? Yeah, it was only the sixth game of the season. I mean, we we plan to be playing a lot more football. So uh, yeah. just. Uh, one third of, through the season, I, I think that we're at where we need to be, where we need to be, but we steadily need to progress if we want to uh, get to where we want to be. How many, as a, as the middle linebacker in this defense, how many tackles a game do you think you should make? I mean, that's a good question. 50? I like that. <laughs> that's a good question. How many think? How many tackles should I make? Uh, how many tackles? All of them. That I think any tackle that I in the area or, or near a guy, I think I should make the tackle. I think I shouldn't miss any. I think that's a better answer for it. I don't think I should miss any. How many have you missed this year? Uh, four or five. Okay. Yeah, Six games, that's pretty good. <laughs>
Hey. <laughs> Christian, uh, Christian. Well, that's really the standard you hold yourself by is basically whatever it is you think you should make every play that comes in your area. Yeah, I think I should make the play. And uh, even on extra effort plays, I, I don't think I should miss the tackle. Any. I think when I miss the tackle, I feel, I feel like uh, I did something wrong. So, yeah. Christian Hackenberg, uh, you saw him last year. You know he's coming into the stadium. And high uh, draft pick, supposedly. Uh, what do you see in him? What stands out about uh, playing a guy like that? Uh, you know, Christian Hackenberg is a very talented guy. I mean, I looked across the ball from him last year, uh, making checks against him. But, uh, you know, him, like you say, he's a, supposed to be a high draft pick, and he's been playing like that uh, recently. But, you know, we just got to see we just got to see what they try to do to us and how they, our coach thinks they're going to scheme us up. And, uh, make adjustments throughout the week. But I think he runs his offense well, and he's a team leader on that team. And Coach Franklin does a good job uh, helping him out. What did that sack that Joey got on the lat, what turned out to be the last play, what did it do for the team as a whole? Obviously, y'all progressed <laughs> as a winner. Yeah. Uh, for him personally, you know what I mean? What, what, what just kind of came from that? It just seemed like y'all got better from that moment on almost as a defense. You know, that was a great atmosphere. My first time being in their stadium. I don't know whatever, whatever the stadium, stadium is called. Yeah. But uh, that was Stadium. Beaver Stadium. That was the best atmosphere I've ever been in in my life. I mean, I was standing side by side. Coach Fick, not even being able to, able to hear him, it was so loud in there on some plays. But uh, going into overtime and Joey making that tremendous play, I mean, all your emotions come out after he makes that play. So we were very thankful in that we knew that uh, if we can work through adversity like that, we can do it for the rest of the season. Rick, how many times during your college career have you dealt with migraines during a game? That was my first time getting it during the game. I, I had one uh, during camp. That's my last one before that. But uh, I mean, it's usually something that triggers it off every now and then. Uh, you, uh, Indiana had this cannon that kept going off. And uh, and then one time I was closer to it, I was in their end zone. And uh, it went off and it triggered it. You know, it's, it's some like a lot of sunlight or something like that just triggers it. But that time it was noise, so it just triggered it off. And was, it a, was it a pain or was it just a blinding a thing? Or what, 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 what did you experience? A migraine headache is like a, just a real bad headache on one side of your head, and it's like a throbbing pain. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that I, my mom gets some from, not, from now and then, but uh, it's something that I've learned to deal with over time. I mean, I don't really get them a lot, but uh, when they do come, I learn how to deal with them.